joint on the last shit. Live in the hills, but it still get a spread. Started with a layer, but it still reinvest it. Fear how I fear, then you feel less a blessing. I just want the lesson, I just want protection. I'm up and I'm down, but the sound like progression. Mama never plans if you race for perfection. I think it's in the down, hold it down, we gon' get it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I got your watches coming in April 3rd, 2020, and oil just messed up the stock market. It's kind of weird to say, but we saw a huge fiasco with oil today. This was the biggest day in oil history ever. I feel like I've said that only a few days ago, but we brought this up on the watch list yesterday. This effect is important, and especially where it's leaving us here in the market. Tomorrow is going to be a very important day. We're going to see the first day of the bailout program with the SBA, so the first part of the stimulus package, you're going to see something come to life tomorrow. We're going to get to see that. So we got to talk about that. I got the keys for you. We got some economic data coming out. We need to talk about what the market is throwing at us. I think this is, again, still a crucial point and what global markets and global currencies are showing us. It's going to be an interesting and fun ride. So I hope you're ready. It's going to be confusing. And then I also think I might have an answer to some of these high premiums. We saw even some moves after hours. Tesla, they did good on those numbers. I'm assuming, I didn't check. I'm assuming that's why they did very good. They're up a lot. But when you go look at the premiums, it even the weeklies and the dailies were super expensive. The premiums are very, very high right now. It is very, very difficult to trade some of these options without taking a lot of risk. So a lot of the cheap contracts we like, they're still expensive, but I think we have an answer. So we're going to try some of these plays out tomorrow. We'll see this week. I got a few other plays we got to be watching. And then some of the stocks that I already bought, I added to the portfolio today. Well, not the long term, but the option. I mean, I mean, we'll go over this. So we got the plays. We got all that. You guys know what you need to do. Drop your thumbs up on the video. Make sure you subscribe. And if you don't know, we are live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes before open. It's the first link in the description and it is pinned in the comments. We better see you there in the morning. It's free 99. It costs you nothing to join. All we ask is that you're positive and respectful. YouTube.com slash the stock market. Anytime during market hours, you can see the plays. You can see the news. You could talk with people. Get hit in the face with the blessing. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? And the most important thing you need to do, post your watch this below. Let us know what you're looking at. You got any plays, comments, remixes, anything, post it below. We need to source that information. We had a bunch of good theories talked about today. And finding this gap, finding the inefficiency in the market with option prices, all that, this is where we source information, baby. So let us get right into it. As far as the keys, you're going to get the jobs report tomorrow, the non-farm payrolls. Today, we saw a bunch of poor data all across the board the unemployment came out today that was one of the biggest in history like if you guys go pull up an unemployment chart here i, ha I have to show you this it it's insane you never look at this this is 1970 1980 there's no other this is unprecedented it was absolutely crazy and even if we want to talk more economic data we did see our balance of trade today and this tells us something but the fact that it hasn't changed i mean if we go to a surplus that'll be crazy but this is showing you something i mean if anything you could kind of see the dollar in this but we'll, we'll get to that but essentially the the data that came out today was already pretty bad the markets did decent uh it wasn't good we gave up a 500 point rally then came back up you could kind of see that here you know we, we started low then we shot up and then we gave it back up and then we closed there so it was a pretty chill day 2.2 percent on the dow we are, however, still, you know, it's it's creating a different range. We're staying in this price range. So that's what we have to look out for. But the jobs report tomorrow will be interesting. And like I said, already today, you got a bunch of other data. You got car data and, and, and a bunch of other stuff. So what we need to see tomorrow is one, what the number is for the jobs, uh, or at least for the non-farm payrolls, and then any of the other data that comes out, and then also the bailout program. They're going to launch that tomorrow. And on it, if any of you, man, if any of you are in the banking business, it, even Munchkin said it, man, it's crazy. The government's offering like banks like 1% on a 90-day loan backed fully by the government. I mean, that, that that maybe that could be affecting bonds right now because there is a, no best trade in the world uh, that safe with that high of a yield on that short of duration. So if you have a way to, to loan money, I mean, you could do some of these SBA loans and they're paying out crazy. But people are worried about tomorrow and how it's going to unroll. You know, some banks are doing it. They might have the same issue that caused this whole repo problem. If banks aren't willing to take certain loans or risks or they can't originate them, it, it's going to be interesting. They did a task force thing. Munchkin talked about it. I know it's Mnuchin. I like to call him Munchkin. I love him. I love everything, you know. But whatever they come up with tomorrow uh, and how this is supposed to roll out, that is going to be, you know, interesting. But he made it pretty clear that they're going to try to get it. And 
They said within two weeks and then another number, and this is something I'd look for just overall in the markets, 10 weeks. He said the, the first stimulus plan was to provide liquidity for 12 weeks. I showed you guys the dollar chart today. I think it kind of blends in with that. And I'm thinking, you know, pretty much by the end of this month uh, around there, we should be able to see whether or not we're going to be at a bottom or if we are going to actually be seeing new lows or even by then we might have lows and again factor in earnings so that being said watch all that we need to see how to interpret it tomorrow and now today was the biggest day in oil this was crazy and what i want you to watch for is the follow-up with any other rumors and news we talked about this yesterday i talked about it earlier in the week i said watch out for any oil rumors and they do that and it turns out trump said something it seems to be a blatant lie that made oil go up then you got exxon started saying stuff and then saudi started saying stuff in russia it was crazy i mean it was absolutely one of the craziest things I've ever witnessed because our SEO plays got clapped. Then the other plays did good, but like th this was a very, very big move, but we're still under $30. So watch the follow-up. But like I said, this is going to mess up the market now because this is going to cause a divergence because until more and more data comes up, you know, this was a big enough move and a lot of money changed hands and imagine future contracts and all that. This changed a lot of things. So how this blends in with the market now, you're going to see a reaction from the market and that could hold things up. And that's what we saw today. You essentially almost saw the market react hand in hand with oil and so did banks. But that is going to cause a problem. And why do I say this is important? Why we need to watch that? Because now watch the global currencies. They're still moving. And then global other global markets are still dropping now from some of these highs we just saw. But watching oil, watch what that produces and, and seeing the impact of that, that is going to be key. Notice how if it doesn't go past certain levels, if it does start to break out and you do get confirmations and some of these rumors turn into some truth, that will be good and you're seeing the potential it has to cause big moves. However, I still think oil is going to go back and forth. So even then, am I going to play anything on oil? I'm holding that SCO call, which is technically a short on oil. And then we also have those USOs, but we have those till January or excuse me, July. Beyond that now, though, I would next thing I'm going to be watching for, and this is coming towards even the end of the month and what I was just saying about April 30th and, and the end of the month and then even with earnings. But watch now for downgrades and bank bankruptcies next. I think that could kind of set us over this tipping point and that will be the next wave. But we've already been seeing awful data again every single day so far, even regardless of the markets are up, you're getting a lot of data coming out other things are just overshadowing it so i think like nine of your big retailers macy's all day those got downgraded you're seeing what happened yesterday with oil and those companies but the next wave i think that will push the market to react or whether it's going to be earnings or not you're going to have to see another wave of stuff and that's why the government's plan with 10 weeks how the dollar values all that once these strains stay there for a certain amount of time, it's going to start these. But we already saw some of the downgrades and stuff. If there is going to be any big event, we could see a, a downgrade to, I don't want to say it, to U.S. Credit, credit or something of that nature because they gave the warning a few weeks ago. So if the situation gets worse or they keep doing more policy or, or whatever it may be, that is actually becoming more of a reality, and, and I'm starting to see that. So watch out for that because you're getting all of this bad data plus the virus cases increasing. Pretty much there's a lot that the market is taking in. So if the market is reacting weird, it's pretty natural. It's really reacting like a COVID patient. You don't know what it has. You don't know what it's doing. It could be asymptotic. It can't be. There's a lot of stuff. It has to digest a lot right here. So we do too. So be patient, be smart, and get ready. Now, as far as the strategy goes, debit spreads might be our answer. So this is what I was saying with the Tesla. If you guys even come here, it was pretty wild. You know, Tesla had a, a crazy after hours move here, 10%, and that's from the opening price, and they were low. So, you know, this was a $100 move. But even if you wanted these contracts, like, look at these were still going for a dollar today. I mean, granted, they were going for six, but that is insane that even to get $100 out of the money and now you're in the money, you were spending $100 to $70 for a contract, $100 out of the money. I mean, I guess since it was there a, a few days ago, maybe Tesla's just moving a lot, but pretty much the contracts are expensive. But now what's a, what's a different way to look at this? You know, I'll just use this for example's sake. It might not be the case, but like you could have done this like 390 call and then shorted the 395. And I'm looking at the last trade. So if you bought this for 60, sold this for 5970, you would have spent $30 and you would have had a $500 max gain and, and you would have actually hit that. So this is what I'm going to be looking for tomorrow. And that's what I'm, I'm saying is kind of going to be our answer here. It's going to be the debit spreads with some of these high premiums. So I'm, and why I'm saying this, cause we're going to have to be able to, you know, or we have the opportunity to make moves on stuff. I think now 
with what I'm expecting towards the end of the quarter or the end of the month and then with earnings, I think the May and June contracts, those are going to be a little bit shaky, but those will be good. Anything with more time will be even better. But if we want to play any of the short term stuff or established stuff, I think we should start getting ready to utilize the debit spreads and even the, the premium selling like we've been talking about. But that is pretty much it. We'll go over that. I have a few different plays I'm going to be looking at tomorrow that we could try this on that we'll be trying setting up in earnings and all that. But I, I mean, I guess it's just time right now. Let us get into the plays. So right off the bat, the play I made today was Amazon. And I like this because it covers two earnings, but it's far out the money. Uh, and this one is far out the money. Now prices have leveled out. Remember, I have that old May. I'm still holding that one. That one's down 60%. Bought it for 600. It's worth 300. That's the May one. So that's already one earnings put play. But this play was surprisingly pretty far at the money. Uh, 920 was just on the cusp of being three standard deviations, which makes sense. Still has a high price, but I bought two of these. I was looking to get a play because I, I said it yesterday. I'm looking at it today. It looks like we're clearly at a tipping point and a development point. So I, just, I still wanted to get a little bit more exposure. And if you guys haven't been noticing, this is what I'm seeing today. And this is what we're seeing with a lot of plays. What's going on is the ones more affected by the virus that are negative, they're getting clapped like Uber and, and all those plays, the airlines and stuff. Stuff like that. But then the ones that are more general market, they're kind of holding up like Amazon, Facebook, Apple, all that. And then that's where the earnings is going to come into play. So I got this one. It was expensive, spent about a thousand bucks, but it covers both earnings. So that's why I'm saying if it has time, I'm going to be able to hold this throughout the whole thing and then have exposure to a company that is held up. And the thing is, Amazon is at a key level. And that's why I think earnings will be the thing that could uh, possibly change it for us. And what, what key level am I talking about? It's the reason why we hit Amazon. So you guys remember, we killed it on that Amazon play. We turned $60 into 600 or something like that. And that was because we noticed Amazon around this price point. It was lagging. The market was going up. You guys remember, we the market was going up and then there was that divergence. Well, here you go. You have the same thing now on the downside. So I think earnings might do that. And coincidentally enough, it's pretty much within like a hundred bucks or 80 bucks off of that level or off of that, that price point. You know, even if you bring it up here on the yearly chart, you could, you know, this area stands out right here. You could see how Amazon kind of held up and it kind of based. This was even pretty much following after Buffett got in, I believe, or he got an 18 or, or somewhere around there. So that's why I'm setting up for them earnings. I could be wrong and I have a decent amount of money on there. So be careful. Contracts are expensive. Time is your friend. Again, none of this recommendation. Options are similar. Again, those almost are in our trust. Don't lose fun. Because on purpose, I thank everyone for that. But that was the first play I made, and then I did Chewy both ways. So I spent nine hundred dollars total. Uh, you guys can see the play here. I grabbed ten of the twenty-five dollar puts for April seventeenth at fifty. So I spent five hundred. Then I got five of the forty-six calls at forty cents, and this was just our old earnings uh, criteria. This is what we've talked about. So I wanted to try it. I said we throw it on here. And Chewy was an interesting company because it's related to the virus and all that. They would have benefited off of it, but they've done good. And I talked about this. I want to see how these companies report with earnings, the ones that should have done good, and then kind of how the market takes it. I want to see literally how does the market respond to a good earnings or a bad earnings? How does the market treat some of these companies that they expected to do good and already bid up while the other market, while the rest of the market was selling off? So this was the criteria. It's pretty much the stock was pricing in almost one full standard deviation. So when the expectations are high, but then you could get just outside of one standard deviation for less than 50 bucks both ways, you could go both ways. So I could have done it with one contract. I should have, but I went a little bit bigger here, but I, I'm excited. I want to see how this is going to value out because if you go see what Chewy did, it, it did exactly what I was expecting where I said, I, I think it's just going to be limited upside and downside, meaning, you know, this is, and this is what I was saying where the market was selling off they started to do good. Chewy's uh, pet food delivery. You know, people are assuming, well, people need that. You know, they were uniquely positioned to benefit off of what was happening here. So now they had earnings, they did good, they beat, but now how is the market going to take it? And that's why I said this could be iron condor season where the companies that do good, I don't think the market's going to bid them up and trade them up like they used to after a good earnings report. I think it'll kind of hold them there. And then if they do bad, I think they could really sell off or they might just kind of just stay up and hold that price. And that's what happens. So now the next level is that is seeing what those contracts do. So that will be uh, interesting in and of itself. So I'm going to be looking at that play. I like that. As far as everything else, I'm still holding those HDs and those other plays we have. Uh, now, now there's a few other ones I'm going to be looking at tomorrow, uh, specifically for like dailies or weeklies. I think Boeing, I'm going to look for a next week Boeing on the put side now that it kind of sold off a little bit. But you could kind of see Boeing just a game of musical chairs. So like this week, none of the weeklies really hit as much. We hit it at the beginning of the week. So now you got to, or last week, I don't know, I can't even remember. You got to let that play out now. Because now this range will, will, will kill premium and all that. 
it's timing it with the premium, but I like them. That could even be a good one to use with the debit spread strategy. Uh, I also think Tesla, after kind of looking at those, I think Tesla will be a wild ride. And at least if something's doing good, a lot of volatility, that one might be a trader's heaven tomorrow. But the next one, I'm going to look for this one on both the next weeks. And again, debit spread strategy as well, United Health. Uh, and I've been waiting for them and they, they're looking interesting. Those other July puts, those went up in value. I'm still holding those. And then finally, I want to build a position around Starbucks. And now this has to go. Uh, I remember we had the Starbucks puts. We already sold off. But what is interesting me now, I want to wait for their earnings. They did good today because Luke and I'm sure you guys saw this. They had a, a report that they were pretty much lied about uh, a lot of stuff. And they, they got clobbered. I mean, pretty wild. But this is like the Chinese Starbucks. So Starbucks did good off that. And again, just Starbucks nature. But compared to some of the other companies we saw today, they did a little too good. You know, McDonald's went up two and a half, but McDonald's was down most of the day. Chipotle, 2%. But then once you get into like Expedia, down 8%. Airlines, down 2%. Carnival Cruise Line, your guys' favorite seven. But specific food companies and fast food type trades, those have gone down. And that's why you're seeing these come back. But they benefited off of the whole Lucan thing, I think. So I kind of want to set something up. I think this would be a gift, if anything, but we'll have to see. And then lastly, I noticed this one. They didn't drop as much. Go look at Expedia and all that. And they're the ones who haven't got hit. They're holding this level. They look awful. I, I know I need to make the trade on it. I really, really do. I want to put on booking, but they're just so expensive, such big spreads. It's really hard to get something with a decent amount of time and decently you know, within the money. So that that's worrisome, but I really, really like the booking play. Like we said, UNH, and then now based off of LK, I'd watch Baba and Baidu and then any of the smaller companies like JD and all that. But you could kind of see the Chinese stocks did a lot better at the end of the quarter than most everything because China's market did good. So maybe we see that rotation now or if the US stocks bounce, maybe they go down or if everything gets negative, they would have an effect. So I sold out of those Babas. If anybody's still holding those Babas, let me know. Are they are they up or down? from when either I sold them or even when you bought them. But I'm going to start looking back at that play. Then finally, the surpriser of the day, the biggest shock, the GLDs. These things went back up 40%, and I was just shocked. They had one run off of the jobs report, and then throughout the day, even with oil and all that, they started to go up. But that was crazy. These, remember, these were down like 20%, 30% the other day, the May ones. But now they're at like a lower price, but the premium's higher. Remember, that's what happened that first time we got it after those, off of those two days, if you guys recall. So gold is getting interesting. We'll see how some of those programs and the other jobless reports factor into stuff. But I'm going to be watching that same thing with UUP. UUP did good. And like I said, this is probably the scariest thing. And I had a good theory. Someone could tag that on the uh, live streaming video today. We went over this. And what I'm seeing with the dollar, I think it's playing out. Uh, we're just going to need months of time on this play. But the fact that the dollar did not break down is even setting a base level of strength at already high levels. It's getting kind of scary there. So this is this is telling us, and that's why that these windows of time, um, I'm correlating this with the dollar and I'm correlating that with the policy being uh, given by the White House uh, with, with what they're expecting and what the stimulus plans and, and how long they've intended that to last for. So I'm still watching that play, holding all of them. Uh, the Junes came back up on UUP and then even TLT, our August premiums went up. The May ones are acting a little funky, but same thing here. But like I said in the beginning, I want to see tomorrow, you might see a weird effect because now there is a new safe government trade and that's loaning out to small businesses. So I want to see not everybody could get into that. So I, I'm very curious to see how that, that could affect the markets tomorrow because that's a better rate. You know, you could buy the 20 year, you could buy the three month, the one month, but nothing beats the, those rates that they're offering to loan out through the SBA and all that. So it's going to be weird tomorrow. I don't know. I think it's on the cards for a big move or a big surprise. We'll see if we get another down Friday, down Monday type thing. However, I'm pretty certain next week we're going to really, really get some activity and it's going to get a little bit more crazier, but we will see and anything could get thrown at us. So I'm excited. I hope you guys are ready, but that is your watch list, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you're healthy, ready to go. Make sure you post your watch list. Make sure we see you there in the morning. I need your helmet on. I need you in the game. This is the point where you focus. We said it today. Don't force it. You can feel when you're forcing it. That's all. It's the timing and finding the exploits. Find where it gets inefficient. Just wait. Let the blockers form. Your time is coming. Just be positive. Oh my gosh, I was going crazy. That's whew. and be careful of what you download, baby. You better rebuke that virus. I hope all of you are good, man. You got blessings coming your way. Get that armor on. Keep it shining. Helmets on. This is not the time to lose your head, baby. That coat loves you. I love you. I'm gonna see you in the morning. Let's go. Mm.